Hi, welcome to another great lunchtime sex chat <laughs> with KK because we love streaming um, sex, mainstream sexual conversations and you know anything to do with females and around men and sex and sex and sex. Um, I'm saying it during people's lunch breaks um, across every social media platform um, possible. And today we've got a, an amazing one, um, Lisa Corrigan, founder of Elisera, um, which is the female empowerment um pill these things are amazing i mean look it's just like even even looking at them just feels like goodness radiating <laughs> out of it. it's amazing um the women's libido booster but do you know what before i completely screw up saying what they're all about you describe you you, you tell everyone what what exactly is elisera and the kind of the yeah the reasons behind it okay so i'll just walk you through it so basically um these are the pills and there's five ingredients in there uh, and they're all natural herbal ingredients but have been shown in many different studies to really have a fantastic effect on a woman's libido so we've got maca extract in there um we've got tribulus terrestris uh, ginseng ginkgo and beetroot and i mean you see lots of different supplements and or powders beauty powders and they'll have about 30 different things in there but the point is it won't be you know the dosages won't be high enough to be doing anything to you really so i really went about researching what was going to have a great effect so i looked at every study i could get my hands on with a team of experts and we kind of let that kind of lead our way in terms of dosages and what's really going to pack a punch because I didn't just want this to be like a placebo. I didn't just want this to be like, oh yeah, well, there's lots of things on the market that will quote unquote enhance libido. And when I look at them and look at, look at the ingredients, I think, I don't know how this can work. Half of it is a mixing agent. Half of it is like, might as well be brick dust. <laughs> and then the rest of it will be like unproven real like ingredients. And, I'm, and it just because it says libido enhancer on it, I don't know how it can work. So it was really important that this did what it said on the tin. Um, if any, and libido is kind of governed by testosterone. So when you're in your twenties, um, your libido is pretty high anyway as a woman, um, unless you are on maybe hormonal birth control or antidepressants. But we'll, we'll come on to those things later. There's a lot of things that can knock off your libido, but Ultimately, our bodies make progesterone, and that goes into testosterone and estrogen. Estrogen is what governs our libido. So when your testosterone is high, usually it's two weeks into your cycle. So two weeks before you're about to come on your period, you are the most fertile. And that's when you will be most up for it as well. So... Um, so what you can... So if you know this, okay, so you know testosterone now governs your libido if you can now naturally raise your testosterone and your testosterone levels that will give you an increased desire um so that's kind of what these these tablets do so maca extract i've put a very high dosage of maca in there it's 10 times stronger than the stuff you'd get in the supermarket and the dosage that i've put in there is is, is a big one um, because that's been really shown to have a fantastic effect on libido, especially in menopausal women when it really drops. Um, and tribulus terrestris as well. Um, that has been shown again, especially in animal studies, to really improve testosterone. There's not much around human studies at the moment, but I think it's a wonderful ingredient. And there's loads of other different like kind of fantastic side effects from all these key ingredients as well. I mean, the ginseng is 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 fantastic for kind of like leveling off cortisol. So if you are stressed, then you don't get as stressed. Do you know what I mean? You never like get to those like really angry levels if you go like, and it, by the way, there's two, there's lots of different types of ginseng, but the one I've put in this pill is Siberian ginseng. I mean, there's one called Panax ginseng, which will have the opposite effect. It makes you super aggressive. Um, but this one is a real calming one because one of the biggest causes of loss of libido is stress. Um, I know we're all really stressed right now. Um, we're in the middle of a pandemic. People are worried about losing their jobs. They're at home, they're homeschooling, this and that's going on. Um, and stress will just completely, completely kibosh your libido. So 
stress levels have got to come down. So that's why there's some ginseng in there. Ginkgo is fantastic for your brain function. Your brain is really involved in um, libido and desire. And then you've got the maca, you've got the tribulus, and then beetroot is fantastic for cardiovascular health. What beetroot does, it's got um, nitric oxide in there. So what it does is kind of like make your vessels dilate. And when you do that, you get great blood circulation and you need great blood circulation to have anything happen, <laughs> whether you're male or female. So, so that's kind of how it works and those are the ingredients inside the pill. It's amazing and on for it because every time um, like when you when you take all the bits sort of anxiety and libido and immunity and cardiovascular you take they all where you were talking they all they all seem very you know people take them as very different things but actually like we were saying before and females are very complicated our biggest sex organ is our brain and and actually when you were talking about it they all came back to libido so yeah. whether it's cardiovascular, whether it's anxiety, you know, it will all kind of the out the output, <laughs> the win, the win at the end of all of them is that is that libido. What did you what when you were studying everything, what was sort of the drive in your head and the what you was really important in creating it? What were the main things that you wanted or found interesting? <laughs> yeah, so um it was I I own a health retreat and I used to get ladies who were like you know 35 plus um up to about 65 really and they would tell me about they'd kind of even if there were some all different backgrounds races religions doesn't matter whatever sizes shapes all different they all had key things that were wrong like they they assumed were wrong with them they all had anxiety weight gain uh lack of energy low libido and stress those five things pretty much every single time. And they would ask me what, you know, what supplements you could take. And I was constantly just recommending the same things pretty much to nearly every single person. Um, and a lot of it comes from a lack, like a, your body image as well. Um, I always say what will turn on, what turns on and off a woman is herself. It's what you see in the mirror. And if you don't feel confident about yourself, then you know that's not going to have a great effect on anything. You're not going to feel desirable. You're not going to feel sexy. And there's no panel in the world that can make change that. But if you start addressing some key things, like I used to teach them on the retreat, your lifestyle factors, um, you, your diet, um, and try a few supplements, and you start everything together, will then bring that. You know, you start feeling a bit more confident when you start losing a little bit of weight and start doing things for you. Because when you start choosing your health first, it's like I'm choosing me now. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of that like mental shift as well. It's mindset. So um, after speaking to these scores of women um, all the time, I um, I was in lockdown one, and somebody messaged me again. And what can I take below the libido? And I thought. Do you know what? There must be something in this because I get these messages all the time. So then I went on um, Google and I went on Google data and I started looking at how many times low libido was Googled or sexless marriages was Googled or anything relating to those terms. And it was unbelievably high. And I thought, this is, abs this is the real pandemic. No one's talking about it, but everyone's thinking about it. Because your real true self will come out in your Google searches. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> you want to know somebody's real. Yeah, I like. always say, that's what I say to my husband. If I suddenly die, just delete my search history. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's your Google searches will give you the real insight yeah. into somebody. And, um, and after seeing all this data, I was like, wow, this is a bigger issue than I actually thought. So then... Yeah, in lockdown one, I um, I started, I went and found a manufacturer and I said, this is kind of what I want to do. I worked with um, the team at the manufacturers. I worked with my own experts as well. We poured over studies and like there's some things that have been used traditionally for libido. There's one ingredient in particular that everybody seems to go on about because of its name and it's called horny goat weed. And yes, do you know it. what? <laughs> yeah, it is like, I don't think it's great. I've not found one one study really that says it's any good. Um, and you find it in a lot of these like libido enhancing pills, but it can make you really aggressive. Um, and I didn't want anything like that for, for these ladies. I just wanted them to be, um, just feel better about themselves. I don't want them to be like 
getting too sensitive and being really aggressive on anything. So uh, we discounted a lot of the traditional ingredients and it went about and uh, produced produced this this pill and the formula that we've got today. And um, it was a long, stressful process. Um, and then a lot of my decisions were kind of led by the women I was talking to. Um, so it, it's steeped in French culture. So that's why the name is French. And because French women are some of the, arguably the sexiest women in the world. Mm. And, um, and they really celebrate women who get older. Like they celebrate old buildings and old art and old literature. And uh, they age gracefully, French women. Um, and it's all about that they step into their age all the time. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's all about that and empowering female. So, um, so that's why the name's French. Um, it actually means she will be in French because it lends itself yeah. to quite a lot of marketing as well. So, um, so yeah, so everything was led by my customers. I, I had like a WhatsApp group going where I would speak to them and say, okay, what do you think of these color schemes? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Because they then told me, you know, we don't want to be patronized. Mm. Uh, when you see like menopause pills, it'll have like a purple flower on it yeah. or a flower on it. And it's like, you might as well just put a cardigan on and yeah. get ready to die, shall we? And <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Do you know what I mean? These ladies are fabulous. Mm. You know, really and it's not, that's not sexual, is it? And that's the thing. It's sort of, yeah. I don't know, anything to do with female sex, there, there's so many labels that sort of, as in, you know, in pregnancy or going on the pill, reproduction, you know, menstruation, menopause, it's sort of nothing ever gets spoken about, about the female pleasure and hormones and our sexuality around all those times. And uh, it's just sort of as if it's, but God forbid, a man can't get, get you know, hard on. Then it then it's spoken about. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's, but that's the thing. It's like sort of when I got that, when I, you know, opened it in the post, I was like, oh! <gasps> <laughs> and then you know and then you open the bags and all the and then the pills come out and it's just there's something kind of and quite slightly intoxicating yeah that you just feel that kind of actually that warm and it's I hate using the word you know em empowered and empowerment it's sort of I use it a lot because <laughs> you have to but you do yeah. feel it rather than oh it's just a band-aid for an issue might an issue you might have yeah but, well yeah all that it comes in this striking tub because um mm. it's all about visibility being visible um every woman was telling me as they get older they feel like they're becoming invisible and their problems are invisible and they shouldn't talk about a loss of libido and if you watch you know mainstream porn you're just supposed to be carrying on like you know milfs and just it's just not reality let's be honest um and interesting you say that like if as soon as it comes to men and erectile dysfunction everyone has to take notice of it i cannot tell you how many times i've been banned on facebook banned on instagram because i can't use the word libido i can't use the word well sexual wells i can't use the words i can't use any phrases and it seems to be i can't even use menopause in some some scenarios no. and it but yet, premature ejaculation ads are all over Facebook. Um, stuff for, yeah, erectile dysfunction is all over Facebook. And I just feel like, again, for female entrepreneurs in the sexual industry or sexual wellness industry, it's still, there's, there's, there's a big difference. Um, and it's, I mean, it seems to be like it's the last taboo for Facebook. Do you know what it I mean? Is, yeah. No, completely. And it's we. I mean, that's why we're we're doing a talk like this because the you know Instagram. We were doing lives every week on Instagram from last March through to September, and then and then suddenly in the space of September, every time I tried to go live, just at nine p.m. at night as well, mm -hmm. it got blocked. It it was yeah. blocked, and then it got really blocked, and then it was like thirty day blocks. And so we went right, sod it, sod you, Instagram. We're going to go live by, on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook at the yeah. same time on a yeah. lunch break <laughs> let's see and let's see um if one of those platforms yeah shut it down so far so good um, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah it's um it's and again but i think that's why it's so important to talk about it and for you know i do get that fit you must get it all the time you probably feel judged you feel um i don't know like 
I feel like since I've been started talking about a lot of sexuality and libido and, uh, you know, I did an article last week for Fabulous Magazine on the vibrators and things like that, and I'm being judged so much more now. And I just yeah. think it's it's ridiculous. It's, you know, and even the comments are like, I just, I just think this is an overshare. You don't need to tell everyone that you do this. Yeah, oh, no, right. completely. We get yeah, it all the way. <laughs> exactly. And I get no, I get it all the sorry, I've, I've got a freaking dog that's now just jumped on me. Um, I get it all yeah, all the time and like the way people look at me is if they, oh, it's that crazy lady. It's the sex lady. And even yeah. I've got friends who who say I'm known as, yeah, the yeah, the, the your dirty friend. Which yeah. is you know, your friends will laugh about it, but you just go, Why why should I be the dirty friend from mm -hmm. you know, um, from what I do? It just sort of says it all really. It's that kind of People are, yeah, I get a lot of humouring. I feel like people are just humouring the, the nutter. <laughs> well, yeah, I get that. I get that a bit as well. And people are just like, I don't know, they've got these expectations or preconceived ideas when actually, listen, this is nothing unusual. This is nothing new. Sex is a part of, it's, it's important. Sexual health is as important as physical health and mental health. I promise you that. It's like when you go to the gym and you feel great, and that has a great feeling. You have a great feeling, dopamine's released and you start feeling great. It's the same when you have a sexual experience, it strengthens your relationship, you start feeling better, you start looking better. It's everything really, it goes hand in hand with everything. And I think we should be talking about it just as much as we're talking about mental health because the two go hand in hand. Yeah, that's why I say it's like a third pillar of well-being, isn't it? You've got your mental, physical and your, and your sexual and actually if you ignore the sexual, the thing that drives you. Absolutely. How can you be, you know, your best what, self? <laughs> what drives everything? Everything yeah. is set up in the world to, like, even if, you know, restaurants and dating and this and that. I'm going to take you on a date. I'm going to do this. And it's all smoke and mirrors to get you into bed. It doesn't yeah. matter what way you want to play it. Every single thing will come back to that. Will come back to we'll sex. Come back to sex. Exactly. Always and we can, you can hide it as much as you want, but it's that's what drives everyone. So exactly. Um, no, I know. I think these are amazing. But what when you were doing like the research and into the sort of especially the female libido, what 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 surprised you? What were what sort of the biggest lessons you learned and the things that actually you know you weren't expecting? Um, and also, that, sorry, lots of questions in this one. Um, like how it different, you know, the differences to male libido. What were sort of the main things that jumped out? So for a man, really, I mean, it's just almost like a hydraulic system. It is get blood to that area. It gets a hard on. That's pretty much it. You know what I mean? Um, things can kind of reduce a man's libido. Stress is a big one. Um Again, if you it's stress, cortisol will depress testosterone. So if you are stressed, then you're not going to have that testosterone. You're not going to have a high libido. Um, so that's the difference between men. And that's why a man can take a blue pill, a Viagra, get blood in that area, and he's ready to go. And that's pretty much it. But with a woman, it's completely different. Um, and it does start in the brain. It starts with her confidence. It starts with um her sensuality it, and also as you get older or you're in a longer term relationship let's say this was what i found really interesting so a woman will be in lust for about six to 18 months and then that's it and so we're not spontaneous anymore we don't you know and it's it's not just going to happen like that so then a woman will just become responsive to her partner. And that is just the way it goes. So as soon as the partner makes a bit of a play for her um, and stimulates her, then she'll become responsive to it. But the lust factor will go. And it goes after, and it goes quite quickly. And that I found really interesting. I thought, yeah, it's true. And then that's when you're in your long-term relationship. You've got to almost make a choice every day. Like going to the gym. You make a choice and you think you get up and you think, oh, I cannot be bothered going to no, the gym today. You know you're going to feel better after it. And when you do, you think, God, I'm really glad I went. I'll do it again tomorrow because you know you felt great doing it. And it's the same. It has to be a choice. You have to choose sexuality. And it's not just going to happen, but you will be responding to it. And, you know, your vagina is a muscle like everything else. It's an organ. And if you don't use it, you will lose it. So you kind of have to, yeah, 
keep it going. Um, and it just strengthens your relationship and everything else. So um, it really is fundamental to everything. You know, if you want to come at it in terms of health, um, wellness, stress levels, um, it really is fundamental. Yeah, we had, um, have you heard of um, Dr. Karen Gurney, who wrote, wrote the book Mind the Gap? Yeah, mm-hmm. Basically, it's like the truth of female sexual desire. And um, I, had a, well, we, I had a chat with her, and it exactly, it's so fascinating that actually you think it's the other way around, but actually women, females lose desire way quicker than the men. Yeah. Um, and actually it is that, it's that conscious effort. And that, actually funny if I said exactly what you just said to a girlfriend, this week when it's just like oh I'm a sex husband for like a month and I said well think exactly that well when you go to the gym do you sit there going oh I can't be asked I can't ask to go for a walk I can't be asked to do that but then you remember yeah. I would remember that feeling of going for a run at the end or after after a good weight workout or and I said remember I said think of how you felt after a good shag I said yeah it's yeah. amazing I went, so do it yeah. <laughs> so you know what I mean it's exactly the same um having to force yourself <laughs> not force yourself yeah, it's, it's, it's hard and you know what lockdown hasn't helped you're spending so much time with your partner you probably you know you're not jazzing yourself up you're probably just wandering around the house in pajamas i know i am by the way yeah I'm around the house in pajamas can't bother putting any makeup on i haven't brushed my hair do you know what i mean i'm doing a thousand other things and you know of course i don't look i don't feel sexy because i look gross and it's you know it's not the first thing i'm thinking about um so that's why it has to be a concerted effort. It really does. Um, and it, and I, listen, I get it. I'm not here to preach to anyone. I get you've got kids to homeschool. You've got, um, you know, jobs, stress to worry about. You're fucking doing a million Zoom calls. You're doing this, that, and the other. And it's probably just not on top of your priority list. But if it was, I think you'd feel a lot better about a lot of the other things going on in your life as well. Yeah, exactly. And that's and that kind of you get to like eight o'clock at night, what I do with three kids under six and just want to shoot myself <laughs> and pass that into bed. But actually what we found with yeah, we're doing more of the little afternoon quickies. <laughs> when you know what I mean, it's that. Yeah. Um took it took us months and months and months to realise that one, but you know, we found it. <laughs> we found the, the little window of opportunity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but on the um um on so like libido in lockdown and you've got this group, you know, you've got a group sort of that you talk to the whole time. What have you, what sort of the bigger things you've seen occurring in the last year when it comes to women and not just, not just libido, because actually, you know, we talk your empowerment pill is sort of, it's not all about libido. There's, you know, immunity, anxiety, um, your whole mood and energy. So actually all of those things have been really heightened, haven't they? In yeah. the last year. So um, what, yeah, what have you what have you seen going on and sort of your advice to people? Yeah, so the other big things that stand out um, are, and most people, you know, they might not even buy it for the libido enhancing properties. It's just like a byproduct, really. But um, like their anxiety is down, um, and they're sleeping a lot better as well. I mean, I read the trust pilots all the time, and I'm not joking. I absolutely love them. People write like essays on trust pilot. You know what I mean? They are like, I cannot mm. believe like, And they are like, I don't know these people. These are verified customers. I've got no idea who they are um, or how they've come to find the product. And they've just written, like, poured their heart out in these, like, unbelievable trust pilots. And I'm just like, wow, this is unbelievable. Like, really genuine customers are giving you this genuinely amazing, uh, you know, feedback as well about something that you created. So I think that's wonderful. So the fact that they've had... Um, really fantastic benefits in terms of their sleep they're sleeping better their anxieties down pms is another one um that you know like the period pain is going away um energy is up and uh, and yet it's got lots of anti-inflammatory properties as well so it's really good for the immune system so that was um so that's been brilliant you know, because I mean, I know Daily Mail called it a female Viagra, which is a catchy. The Daily Mail, honestly, they I, I got poshest swinger in town. They were the ones that out, outed me 15 years ago, so they love a headline. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, which you know, it's catchy, and whatever, and I get it. Sells, sells the story. But um, there is a quote-unquote female Viagra out there, which is like a medication. But wow, I mean, one, it's very hard to get, and two. 
the side effects of it are just horrendous. It's like dizziness, nausea. Mm. You can't drink on it. You can't, you're not really be able to drive after taking it for like at least six hours. Um, it can cause fainting. And I just thought, oh my God, like, so it's not even worth taking that. And that's why I wanted to create this herbal herbal supplement that really did kind of try and target target that. But because they called it a female Viagra, then I got loads of customers who were like expecting to take one pill and they're like ready to go. And, I, and in all my literature everywhere I write about it or anything, I'm like, listen, you have to be take, have to take this for at least three months to kind of notice those um, those benefits. And that goes with any supplement you might take. So whether it's vitamin D, whether it's vitamin C, omega-3, whatever, any supplement for it to get into your body, 90 days, at least, at least 90 days. Um, and this is why people come to me and go, oh, I can't feel it working. I'm like, how long, sorry, I can see that you bought it last week. Mm. And um, you need to be taking it a lot longer than that. Uh, but if you do, I guarantee you'll get some great, great benefits. But I, I feel like saying, do you take omega-3? Which you probably do. So, yeah, I do. Would you notice anything from that? Yeah. You just trust that it's doing something for you. Um, so, yeah, so that's... Um, that's the same with it. That's the same with everything, isn't it? A lot of people like start going to the gym or go on a diet. And then um, yeah. they're like, well, why are we losing loads of weight? Why, why have we suddenly got massive muscles? I, think, I didn't think that society as a whole... You know, it's just, it's got we've got worse in that kind of just the band aid culture yeah. of just, you know what I mean? We want instant fixes and we want it now. And if we can pay money for something without actually taking any personal responsibility, then let's do that. Well, <laughs> exactly. You know what? Enjoy the journey. Like I'm yeah, I used to be a, a bigger girl. I've lost a lot of weight over the years. And yes, it didn't happen it did not happen overnight. Uh, it's something you've got to be conscious of, do it every single day and change your lifestyle accordingly. And it's kind of the same thing, do you know what I mean? I can't, I can't stand there and go, this is magic. No. This, you're going to take it and you're going to feel like, bang, like some wanton sex goddess. You're not going to feel yeah. like that. That's it. You've got to, with everything, you've got to do the work. And like we were saying about you were saying about, you know, desire. You don't, you can't, you know, you can't just sit there and expect to suddenly look at your husband or partner or girlfriend after you know, after two years and um, go, well, why don't I want to jump them? You just, yeah, yeah. You, have to, you know what I mean? You have to, it's making the effort, isn't it? Absolutely. It's everything and putting the work in. So on that, what um, what's your advice, um, you know, when you do the retreats and the people you help and stuff to what to do on top of taking supplements on the, when it comes to libido and just, you know, arousing them? Yeah, I think it's honestly, it starts with yourself for a woman. If you feel sexy, if you feel like you look good, you're going to you're gonna automatically feel sexier in the head and you're going to be more confident and you're going to be just, just have a complete different outlook and mindset. So, um, and it all comes back to a few things. It comes back to how healthy are you? Um, a lot of it with women is to do with weight. Every single one of my followers will always talk to me about weight. How do you lose weight? What can I do for my weight? Wait, 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 wait. Everything. Everything is to do with their body image. It doesn't really matter what question I put out there. It all comes back to that one thing. And it seems like if women lose weight, they automatically feel sexier already. Um, and a, like an unhealthy diet, obesity, especially, or especially around like, the stomach, real high estrogen. If that is a problem, you're going to have no libido anyway. So uh, if you lose weight, usually it starts coming back because not only do you feel more confident and you're like looking at yourself in the mirror a bit more, you, you know, then it's uh, you feel a bit flirtier and your mindset changes and you start feeling sexier. Yeah. So confidence it's huge, isn't it? It just I, I say confidence is a thing, you know, whether it's work you know, bedroom to boardroom, as we call it, um, in that, yeah, you're not going to ask for a pay rise, you're not going to, you know, ask for what you want in the bedroom, if you're without that, without that confidence. Yeah, and I think it's just, it's showing yourself some self-respect as well, um, you know, if you really do respect yourself and respect your body, and I always use this term, it's a collection of perfection, right, so when I'm telling some of my clients, like, okay, don't think about like the six months you've got ahead. 
before you lose your whatever it might be, three stone or whatever it might be you want to do. Um, I just think about the next meal you put in your mouth and make that as perfect as possible. And then that's all you need to think about, just the very next one. And then the next one after that, make that one as perfect as possible. And the next one as perfect as possible. And then after a while, you'll have this like collection of perfection. You know what I mean? And it's almost been effortless because all you had to do is think about the next step in front of you and not the, right, what I want to do in the next three months kind of thing. Uh, and just take it step by step by step. Um, and once you've got that self-respect and then you've got, you know, you start seeing a bit new changes and then you start feeling a bit more confident, you start feeling sexy, you start buying yourself new clothes, you start putting makeup on a bit more, whatever it might be that makes you feel sexier. Then it has a huge effect on your overall outlook and your libido. Yeah, you feel back yourself. I mean, someone um, said this week, um, you yeah, know, looking at like old old bit pictures and someone just, you actually look, you know, you come, you look, you're hot and like sort of now in your 40s. I said, do you know what, that's, all that is is confidence. That's yeah, all that yeah. is, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't body wise or whatever look better now than I did in my 20s, but now I literally couldn't give two fucks what people say about me, think of me, or being naked. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just so, um, and Wait, that, I yeah. Think yeah, I think that comes with like confidence as you as you get older and you you start don't smell the sweat the small stuff anymore. And there's nothing more attractive. I don't care what you look like, what size you are. There is nothing more appealing and attractive than a woman who is confident within herself. No, we see that. You know, we see that all the time with KK and the members, and you know, all the events or even online. And sometimes, you know, it sort of you don't expect. Sometimes, actually, the the women like I'll see naked or in lingerie walking around and stuff are actually the one Jen it's purely there's something about them there's an energy about mm -hmm. them and a confident and the kind of size and shape and color and everything is just go it's totally irrelevant it just says they've got a presence yeah um, so yeah get out there and back yourself um, no, um cool well I'm, that was amazing so thank you very much but there's someone to sell i think you can natalie then who came in late but it's, it's ella sarah um and the it, yeah, all the info will be in the attached to the videos anyway, so you'll be able to um, see it. But yeah, they're amazing, and you know they look amazing. To be honest, and they feel well, amazing. So <laughs> back with me. Let me know how you're getting on with them. I will. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and just let me know how, like, because you you know you should feel great energy. You should be sleeping better. You should have less anxiety. If you don't if some use some with anything like that. But then you know when your husband gets back, let me know about the libido. <laughs> oh yeah, then I will. <laughs> <laughs> then, it, then it will kick in. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, do you know what? Thank you for joining us. Thank um, you so much. Yeah.